If you hear the words Silent Hill and Unreal Engine 5 in the same sentence, you get Traversal Sutter. And Silent Hill F is no exception, as it suffers from frequent stuttering issues. But at least we can deal with the Traversal Sutter and even 100% eliminate it. See, in certain areas, there is a specific point where the game loads and unloads assets or parts of the level. When that happens, the game instantly drops frames for a brief moment, and after investigating this issue, I found that it is related to GPU usage. The moment the switch happens, the game demands a decent amount of GPU power. I measured it to be around 30% extra usage in the worst case scenario on the RTX 3060. I found that it required 9.5 milliseconds of GPU time, and that is a lot, meaning if you have 60 FPS, the stutter will drop you to 38 FPS. What you can do to prevent it is have some GPU headroom, meaning you want the GPU usage to stay below 100%, so that when the switch happens, you are ready for it and have the spare GPU power for the switch to use, instead of using the GPU power your frame rate is relying on which leads to dropped frames and stutters. One foolproof way to do this is to cap your frame rate below what you can achieve on average and monitor your GPU usage. If it is consistently below 100%, that means that you have some GPU usage to spare and will greatly reduce or even eliminate these stutters. Another thing I noticed is that the TSR quality levels don't really work. They render the game at the same or nearly the same internal resolution because the frame rate barely changes. Instead, use the screen percentage setting. As for CPU performance, I am disappointed. Firstly, the game doesn't properly utilize the CPU as it only uses around half of it when bottlenecked. So there is a lot of potential CPU power just sitting there. And secondly, the frame rate when CPU bottlenecked is very low for a game like this, averaging around 60 FPS and easily dipping below it on the R5-3600X, meaning older or lower end CPUs can't really aim for higher than 60 FPS on average. For an extremely linear game like this, this is unacceptable. We have just recently seen open world games with lots of things going on that can achieve much higher frame rates on the CPU than this such as Dying Light the Beast for example. I have noticed a pattern, Unreal Engine 5 games tend to be very heavy on the CPU, so the base engine is partly to blame here, alongside the devs of course. The game offers a basic number of settings for what is considered acceptable nowadays. Let's start with the indirect lighting setting, which when turned on, vastly improves the look of the game. Using the epic setting improves its accuracy and quality, but not to the degree where it is worth its performance hit. And this setting also introduces some visual issues. When panning the camera quickly, you can see obvious artifacting or ghosting of some elements on the character's face. This is unfortunate, but it is what it is. As the game is designed with this setting as a base, I recommend using the Lumen High option for the best balance. The reflections setting affects the overall image quality. The difference between SSR and Lumen High is very apparent, and Lumen Epic only slightly increases the resolution of the reflections, but it is very hard to notice, even when side by side. And as it also has a big performance impact, I recommend using Lumen High instead for the best balance. The shadow quality on low disables shadows, medium enables some nice looking soft shadows, while high and very high gradually increase its quality and performance impact. This setting also affects volumetrics quality and the render distance of some lights. I recommend using the medium option for the best performance and if you have some performance to spare, feel free to use high. Texture quality increases when going from low to medium, any higher, and there is no direct improvement to texture resolution. It does however improve texture filtering, 
and VRAM usage only increases when going from low to medium and stays the same on the higher options. I only discovered one thing the shader quality setting controls, which is the amount of foliage it can animate, but I wasn't able to find a scene where the very high option made a noticeable difference over high. It can also decrease performance even further, so I recommend using high for the best balance. The visual effects quality setting enables distant fog when going from low to medium. I also heard that on very high it is supposed to enable rolling fog near the player, but I tested many scenes and I wasn't able to tell if that was the case. It also enables subsurface scattering on character skins, but the medium and high options degrade hair quality on parts where they overlap the face, so that only leaves very high as the viable option, and thankfully, it only has a small impact to FPS, so use very high as I think it is worth it. The only difference the post-processing setting makes is that it enables vignetting on medium, which is the dark halo around the corners of the screen. I tested many scenes and didn't find any other differences. The view distance setting only seems to make a noticeable difference when going from low to medium. The higher options seem to look and perform the same as medium. Maybe these options are broken. For anti-aliasing and upscaling, you have the basic native options of FXAA, TAA, and TSR. For upscaling, you have FSR and DLSS, and by far, the most stable and best looking options are the TSR native and DLSS quality. However, TSR native seems to perform way worse than it should, at least in certain scenes like this one. Perhaps something is wrong with this option in this game, so keep an eye on your frame rate if you want to use TSR. As for the image quality in motion, the only immediate visual issue that pops up is the ghosting on TAA and FSR. The other options look mostly similar. Overall, DLSS quality is the clear winner here. Here are the optimized settings. If you enjoy my work and want to be able to download these optimization guide videos to watch without the YouTube compression, you can do so by supporting me directly on Patreon, so I can keep pumping out videos for you guys. The game can be very demanding on max settings at native 1440p, averaging 21 FPS. Using the optimized settings while still at 1440p increased the frame rate by around 50%. Not bad, but not great. Using DLSS quality further improved the frame rate from 31 FPS to 56 FPS on average. That's another 80% increase on top of the base 50%. So, in total, we went from 21 FPS to 56 FPS on average, which is a total increase of 166%. Too bad we are still not averaging 60 FPS on the RTX 3060. What do you guys think?